channeling the spell. This is going to be a fire raga. It doesn't kill somehow, and it kills Nyad to land a kill. You oh my god! Here, apparently not, because she is going for the back line. This is instant casting. Let it be What is up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL Season 4, Week 8 of the Champions League. We've got six awesome fights for you guys with some of the best players that Wotub has to offer. We've got Sandrister, Coach of Unicorn, Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo in first seed right now. Seven wins, two losses here with the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over Maverick. He's been crushing all season. Started off the season 0-2, ripped off six straight wins with the Mace Girls, and then last week pivoted. Saw Machin X's Fryavia, said, I'm not running Mace into that. Brought the McLeod. The McLeod just hard carried, did a lot of work. It was a very impressive win to keep himself in that first place spot. Maverick, coach of the Symphony of the Knights, currently sitting at 7-2 as well. Does have the head-to-head -head loss to Sand Rooster, but in, in control of his own destiny to at least get a first round bye, hoping to pick up another win this week. Has been crushing it with Halloween Lucio and Grifford especially. Cyrell or Mont Leonis to pair alongside him, just depending on what the week calls for. He has clinched a playoff spot along with Sand Rooster, but the other four are up for grabs. So we are trying to find out who else is going to join them here. Very likely going to be McCrane, coach of Scarlet Moon Empire, currently sitting at a 6-3 record. He's been crushing it with his shells comps alongside Elda Leonis. I don't know who uh, called that Elda Leonis was going to be dominant all season, but he has been. He's been absolutely insane. He has been a terror alongside shells, and uh, his team is very, very scary. After that, two teams tied at a 5-4 record, JB79 of the Paranoid Androids and Turnbar of the Fire Ferrets. JB has been on a tear. He started off the season 1-4, has ripped off four straight wins. Not surprised at all. Honestly, I was shocked that he started off 1-4, but he's been crushing it ever since. Has put himself in a really good chance to make the playoffs. I, he can clinch a playoff spot if he wins this week, but it's not guaranteed. It depends on who wins and loses the other matches. Same with Turnbar. Turnbar's chances are actually less to clinch this week, even if he wins. It depends on who else wins those fights. So after that, we've got Machin X, Ready Player Will, Jesus LBL, and Surf Taco, all at a 4-5 and five record. Right now, Machin X has the best tiebreaker scenario of these four teams, but again, depending on who wins and loses, those tiebreakers can change a lot because it's all about head-to-head, -head, and it depends on who you're tied with. You know, if one of those teams that you had a good head-to-head -head loses, and now you're not tied uh, tied with them anymore, it might not matter. So, House Shoe Puff, Growing Strong, Fight Club, Straw Hats, and Britney Spears all at a four and five record. Very likely need, to, I mean, they have to win at least one of the final two matches, but very likely need to win both to have a good chance. And the last two teams with a chance of making it, just a sliver of hope. Coppola, coach of sword and sor sorcery mercenaries, sitting in a three and six record, needs to win both weeks to have a chance. And same with Ram 9 and the Rock Boys. And speaking of Hot Streak, Ram 9 did start the season one and six, which is hard to believe, but he's won two straight weeks. If he could pick up another one this week, depending on how the other matches go, he might not be in a terrible spot heading into the final week. If anybody was gonna make a run, it would be him. And last but not least, we've got Numero 80, Coach of the Blind Enthusiasts, currently sitting at a 2-7 and seven record. He's eliminated from the playoffs, but is an excellent player and uh, an excellent person for the community. And this is actually something I wanted to mention to you guys on this video here. Numero 80, I've mentioned before in other videos, um, created what is called the Wodif Blind Enthusiast League. Hint, hint at his team name, the Blind Enthusiasts. And it is essentially a league. It's not a draft format, but similar to this, where you play against another team every single week with the roster that you have basically handpicked and you go against other players. He is currently looking for more players to join his league. Um, so I am going to basically leave all the information in the description of this video down below. And I think he's looking for another like seven or eight players. So if you're interested, uh, I would jump at it soon. It is likely going to start right after the playoffs of the WDL season four finish. So again, if you're just looking to get into some PVP, um, and maybe something slightly different than the WDL. I think it's a, it's a really good time. I enjoyed it last season, and uh, I think I'm actually going to be doing some casting for it as well, which is going to be cool. So if you guys are interested, check it in the description below. But that being said, these are the standings, guys. We've got six fights to jump into. And before we do that, just real quick, wanted to say thank you to the YouTube members as always, and special shout out to Kells, our newest YouTube member. Thank you so much to all these 22 people for supporting the content. Let's check out the fights.
kicking off the penultimate week of season four WDL. We've got Champions League and we have Surf Tacos Britney Spears versus the Blind Enthusiasts. And it looks like a Velm alongside Corwell and the Yaldo team coming up from numero 80. Sosha, Lisette, and Elia the Alabaster for Surf Taco as she is ready to go. She's got that courage and she is ready to deal a ton of damage. But Corwell coming in with the focus targeting the accuracy up. Probably not going to matter, but the defense piercing rate will help. Big question is, though, can Dialdo actually tank? As Elia is very likely to be able to hit the back line with her triple single target skill. Dialdo is probably a good bring, but they are a bit close together, and that has me worried here for numero 80. As the double resist coming out from the Lisette, giving pierce and missile resist, that will help against both Velm and the Corwell. Only 1900 damage. Holy cow, that was tanked insanely well, as Velm does hit like a truck. But this is the limit break coming out from Elia. This is going to debuff the lightning resistance, and good night, Velm. Thanks for playing. And I am so sorry, as Corwell is going to come up next. What kind of damage can he do? True Striking Arrow actually does a ton this time. 6,400 damage. Can they take out this Elia sooner rather than later? Just barely doesn't proc the Courage, though, which might be massive as she might be able to deal a ton of damage here. Corwell is going to get another turn, but unless he can remove Courage, it's going to be hard as the Jamming Dive comes out. Drain Rush not doing barely anything. Dialdo doing a very good job of tanking, but it looks like at some point she lapped in the turn order. She went past Corwell, even though it looks like he was going to go first. The Stag Impact is going to take him out. Out, and this should be Surf Taco's fight to win here. Sosha's going to buff. She's going to take the high ground just like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Earthrending Pain coming out from the Dialdo is going to do just a little bit of chip. Wicked Pummel going to punch that Dialdo right in the chest. And the 5 HP Ally the Alabaster almost finishes it off. Says, hey, you can have one more turn, but that is all you get. Just kidding. Sonic Counter punches him in the back before he even gets to act. And that is a convincing win for Britney Spears and Surf Taco who keep their chances high in terms of making the playoffs. They got a lot of teams to compete with in the middle of the table here. Let's see what happens in the next battle. Battle number two this week is between the five and four Paranoid Androids and the four and five Straw Hats, JB versus Jesus. And it looks like JB's running his patented Elda King of the Lions alongside Agrius and Curry. Curry there to support. Agrius does give a little bit of AP to both herself and the Elda here, as Boko's protection is here for Bart's. One thing I will say is that physical barrier, normally very, very important for his survival, might do some work against Agrius, but Elda is a very good barrier breaker. As the Wind Veritas TMR comes out from Uni, and note, Curry procced the Vega TMR, so he has a chance to berserk could put a little bit of RNG into this fight. As Soma finishes a fast cast, she's going to go for another one, and Bartz has his follow-up online, so he is ready to bring the pain when his teammates hit. As Agris is going to buff and walk forward, Elda's going to go Fortress of the Lion, has a huge physical and magical health shield, which obviously will be very important and could be pretty huge, especially considering Bartz is on the other side. If Uni doesn't deal damage, the follow-up doesn't hit. Aerofall hits, though. Follow-up 2800, honestly soaked pretty well by this tank. Agrius, there are two follow-ups remaining, and what can he get done with them? As Rebellious Spirit comes online, this is big. Attack up, defense piercing, that means that follow-up's gonna hit even harder. As Agrius is gonna go next, the Taunting Blade does very, very little damage, especially with that physical barrier, but does gather some hate. Elda is out of buffs and not able to deal damage, though. Frostmob Barrage lands a double Frostbite and a Berserk onto, onto Uni, though. That could be massive. Unfortunate, the Berserk doesn't land on the Barts, and the follow-up must be a height range thing, as he did not get a follow-up on mine. Blade Blitz kills the Agrius, and now it is a 3v2 advantage for JB here, but that is a Frostbitten Barts. Lion's Drain comes out and the Uni is down. I said it was a 3v2 advantage into JB's favor. I meant Jesus, but that is okay. Kira comes out and it's now a 2v2. Curry's gonna go another Frost Mob Barrage, just refreshing that Frostbite. Silma, fortunately for herself, starts with tons of AP, but the Curry is going to reflex it. Jamming Thrust going to whiff. And how much Barts, or how much AP does Barts have? He starts with 50, gonna lose 23. Blade Blitz comes out enough to just demolish the Curry. Does tons of damage to Elda as well. He is basically fresh out of AP though. As Crossbreak comes out from the Elda, he needs to somehow survive a couple of hits here and double kill. Resistance Break removes the re-raise though. Can Barts kill with the amount of AP he has? He has none. He needs to kill with the standard attack 4,500. 
You've got to be kidding me. That is so much damage from a standard attack, and he needed every bit of it, because if he doesn't get that off, Elda is going to double kill them there. So that was a fantastic fight, guys, with Jesus winning. Both of these teams are now 5-5, five and five, which means the fight or playoff seeds just gets incredibly tight here with one week to go. Excellent fight, and congratulations to Jesus. Scarlet Moon Empire, House Shoop Up growing strong. Here we go. And it looks like a Shadow Link's appearance here for McCrane. I don't know how many times we've seen her this season for him. This might be a first, at least from what I can remember, as it looks like Machen X is going with Howl at the Heavens Blade, Tyrell, and Fryevia. Ice Water team versus a, uh, a mixed bag here for McCrane. But if anybody's going to put in work with it, it would be him. As the Puppet Master is going to come out, I believe this went on to Shadow Link's. So this is going to give her courage for herself and to the evasion unit, and more importantly, gives herself some hate down as well. Amnil is going to start channeling something here, though, and Tyrell, what does he go for? It's going to be the Keen Blade. Big Shocker, CT up, and Slash Tack up, which is going to benefit that entire party for how shoot buff here. As Fryavia, rocking almost 18,000 HP, my goodness, gets the Magic Barrier online. Have fun getting through that Amnilus, as it looks like Howlet is going to go next with the momentum. King Bradley TMR, haste and reaction block, ready to go. And Tyrell, I imagine gonna go for divine power, and there it is. Max HP up, defense piercing, healing power. Most importantly, 100% debuff resist. You can't debuff that guy, it's absolutely crazy. As Fryevia, gonna go next, she is out of buffs though. And Shadow Links with tons of movement, I thought might be able to kick this fight off, but not quite. Goes for the devotion, so it looks like the samurai sub job is here. More importantly, probably for Illusion and Hien, I would assume, as Rite of Safe Passage comes out from the shells, making this team nice and tanky. And Amnilus, I think, cannot reach as well. She's going to go for another channeled spell here, Hour of Anti-Magic. And that's a nice little magic shield, so everyone's going to be very, very tanky on both sides here, I think, especially from McCranes. The counterpoise is there for Howlet. And finally, will we thing see things kick off once it's Fryavia's turn? I would assume so. The Paired Blessing going to land on a Shadow Links and Amnilus. And here we go. Things are going to start kicking off. I imagine go for, for a Spell Veil Blade. Should be a guaranteed hit onto the Shadow Links. No, goes for the Ice Prison. Goes for the Limit Break. Interestingly enough, this got dodged by Shadow Links. Only did a thousand to the Shals here. And I think that was a mistake by the Fryavia here. Shadow Links is going to go next. Gets the regen, not that she needed it. Shadow Tether, unit attack resist dropped. Cruci crucially, though, no stop. Machen probably coming in prepared for that, I would assume, as the Rebellious Spirit is here for Tyrell. And he does not have a lot of range. He can't start things off. What can Amulus get done, though, against this monster of a magic tank in Fryavia? How is going to go Siphonic Breaker, 7,400 damage. It would heal him up if he had any health to heal, as Ternary Seal only can do 1,500. Shall should be able to heal up this Amulus to full, though, you would think, as Beachside Rejuvenation, that Summer LCTMR. We've seen McCrane put in work with this all season, a very smart option here, as it does give that instant cast spell and a range spell to boot. As for Ayevia, she has taken a ton of damage. She's still got 11,000, though. Spell Veil Blade going to heal her up even more, though, especially with the defense and spirit up. But here is the big carry of Machen's team. What can he get done? What can Howlet do? Last time it was about 7,000 damage. Can he increase on that? Tranquil rendering 14,000. I would say that is an increase on that as Shadow Links is going to go next. She should be able to reach this Fryevia. She has crazy movement. She's got to take a really weird path, though, as Dark Haze comes out, lands the blind. This shouldn't matter a ton, though, as that guaranteed hit is there for Fryevia, and then I think that's probably what she's going to opt for in most cases anyway. Amnil is going to go with the Ternary Seal, though. That just nukes the hell out of Tyrell. So many turns have passed, I think it actually might have ran out of debuff resistance as well, but he is just notoriously bad versus magic damage. That is his big weakness as Fryavia going to go next. Can she claim the kill on the Amnos before Shalos finishes this spell? Crucially, this casting time taking a little too long. No, she opts for the Knight's Blessing. I don't know if that's good or bad as Curative Prayer is going to heal Amnos to full. It's also going to refresh that permanent courage that she has, which means Shadow Links with the Dark Haze is going to refresh the blind. And that's the thing is facing this team by McCrane, you have to get through. These units, it's just so pesky to get through them. Tranquil Rendering comes out again, another 12,000, but crucially, like I said, that Courage keeping her alive. Fryavia should be able to take her out next turn. We'll have to see here. 
as Amnelis is going to heal just a tiny bit. I imagine another Turinary Seal. Will she get it off in time? I don't think so. Fryevia has plenty of AP. She's going to start channeling a spell, though. What is she going for? Is she trying to get rid of her blind? Turinary Seal is coming out, dealing a chunk of damage here. And Shells, does she get this heal off? It's the S. Yuna, so she gets rid of the blind, interestingly enough. That supportive AI, I think, not working out for her at the moment, as Shadow Lynx is going to go with the standard attack, do a little bit of damage to the Fryevia, but this Amulus is so pesky here because Fryevia doesn't want to hurt her. And Howlet, next up, has tons of AP, but they're running out of action. 17 turns left, Tranquil rendering for a third time. He says, why won't you die here? As Amulus is still remaining with one HP for the third time, She's going to start channeling another Turinary Seal, and this is going to chunk the Howlet a good amount of damage, and it's finally starting to do a little bit of damage to Fryevia as well, who finally goes for a Spellville Blade here, knocks out the Amnelis, but this is now down to a 2v2. Can they kill this Shadow Lynx? I think Shals is going to go for a full life. It's Vivifying Supplication. They said, gosh, damn it. This Amnelis will not die. We've killed her so many times that she just keeps coming back as the Howlet with 109 AP and 11 actions, she, he was trying for a fourth kill on this thing. And then uh, he's thinking long and hard about it as he's gonna go for the limit break. Limit break, goodness. Magia Arte comes out. How much damage is it going to do? 10,000, so he doesn't damage cap this time, but this is like the fourth time that he's had to kill this damn Amnelis. As Spellveil Blade comes out, heals up the Fryavia, and now this is close again. I don't think Shells has another Vivifying Supplication. I don't think. Goes for the Paired Blessing this time. If they can get the Shadow Links low enough, Machen can still win this fight here. Seven actions remaining. This is almost certainly going to go to turns. Hien comes out for 4,000 damage, gets that evasion up. Can they actually land damage on this Shadow Links? Howlet is ready to go. He still has plenty of AP. And with five actions, they have a moment. Siphonic Breaker for 10,000 damage procs the Courage. Dragon's Blade, though. You've got to be kidding me. By Shadow Links does 10k on the counter and heals her to full. Holy shit. As Fryavia is going to go next and just go for the Attract Barrier, she can't land the damage. She doesn't have the accuracy. Shadow Links is going to go next. And she is going to go with the Dark Odin Summon. And it's going to kill the Howlet. Shells is going to go next on the final action. Um... Guys, I gotta be honest, I think that counter was the difference. I, you hate to see it, but I think that counter was the difference. McCrane is going to pull off this victory all because of that Dragon's Blade. I think if that Dragon's Blade doesn't land, Shells doesn't get the heal off in time because she was the final action. We've seen before her heals were not instant cast, and then Shadow Links would not have been able to claim the kill on either one of those two units because Howlet would have had way more HP instead of barely any, but man, actually a crazy fight they killed the Amnelis like five different damn times if i was machin i would be so annoyed from having to kill that thing so many times but heck of a fight really damn close and congratulations to mccrane for winning it next up we've got symphony of the knights versus sword and sorcery mercenaries maverick especially with the McCrane win, is trying to keep the winning streak up so that he can claim a first round buy-in playoffs here. As it looks like the physical health shield is there for Halloween Lucille alongside Grifford and Mont with the Wind Veritas TMR coming out. But Coppola says he has an answer with the Mage team, with Skahal, with Gargas and Katia to heal from the back. Coppola needs to win this week to keep his playoff chances alive. He needs to win out to have a chance, but we'll see how it goes. Boon of the Lion coming out from the Mont. To get that AoE resistance up, he uses his King Mont version's TMR here as the protect on to everybody. I will say that does get dispelled fairly easy, easily from the Halloween Lucille, but it might protect against Mont and Grifford if they hit first. As Halloween Lucille is going to use his own Thrustmaster to get that, uh, try to get the AP Auto Restore up, but that part doesn't work. It does give him some increased physical damage, though, as it looks like Skahal and Gargas are out of buffs at the moment. And Grifford goes with his own physical health shield as, as well. Not going to do any against this magic. Taunting Blade basically doing nothing to the Gargas and Skahal. Skahal's Courage still online, still above that threshold. And Katia, what does she go for? She's out of buffs. So she's just going to walk forward, hopefully not put herself in harm's way here. As Sharp Spear comes out to get that crit rate up. Flare should do a lot of damage to this Mont here. 9,800 from the Gargas is a really good start. Can Skahal take him out at the start of this fight? The tank being gone before he could limit break could be huge. 5,000 from the Flare is enough. Two Flares 
and one dead Mont as Enduring Formation comes, in, comes out from the Grifford. And can these three mages take down the two Axe Bros? As Unavailable Pain does 5,300 to the Halloween Lucille, that's more than half his health bar. They need one more of those to have a chance here as Katia is going to start channeling another spell, but what is it going to be? She's walking forward into harm's ra range. The Spell Slam comes out and procs the Courage onto the Skahal, though, as it looks like Katia is going to get that buff on everybody, but I don't think she's going to get an opportunity to heal. Skahal, what is his casting time? It's not in instant he's going to die to the mortal draw and it removes the re-raise he needed to get that spell off here and now it is gargus and katia versus the world gargus can he find a kill on this halloween lucille bursting light comes out plenty of damage to take out the halloween lucille but it is now two wind units versus grifford and grifford says i like those odds he's going to go dual judgment decent amount of damage to both but the auto cure coming out from katia heals her to full is Gargus below the healing threshold? It looks like he's not, as Katia's gonna go for a Bioblade. Katia, I think that's a mistake. I think you need to heal this Gargus because he's probably gonna die in the next hit. But Flare, if it can deal good damage, stands a chance. 4,000 is a decent amount. He needs two more of those. And Hammer of the War Master with the debuff on the AoE resistance. I expect this to deal a good chunk to Gargus. If it doesn't kill, they have a chance. It does not kill. Auto Cure comes out from the Katia. If Katia can heal this Gargus, Kampla may be able to just pull this out as Katia is going to start channeling. Gargus is channeling. What is going to happen? Windlash comes out for 2,800 damage, dropping the AoE resist, and Grifford says, no, I'm going to pump that back up, but he goes before Katia finishes the spell. The heal is not going to go off. Sleep Reaver is going to dunk the Gargus. Curative Prayer is going to whiff, and I think that is going to be all she wrote. Unless Katia can get a raise, she cannot. She will be cut down by Grifford's axe in an absolutely stunning and amazing fight, to be honest, guys. That was actually really, really awesome. Coppola just barely, unfortunately twice, missing out on casting time. If Skahal was just slightly uh, quicker and got the attack spell, or if Katia got that heal off, I think they easily take that fight, but Maverick is victorious in this matchup. Congratulations to Symphony of the Knights. Next up is Fight Club versus Unicorn Gunfight 2 Electric Boogaloo. The shortest team name versus the longest team name as it looks like the triple mace comp coming back out for Sanders Tree. Picked up a win last week with a different team, but he's coming back to the Mace Girls. And can Ready Player Will overcome with Perrine, Rosa, and Little Leela? One thing I will say is if anybody was going to beat these Mace Girls, it would be this Little Leela. If she can land a Silence, that could be huge. But Eldira's Theorem is going to come out. I believe this does nullify Silence. For at least at least a couple turns i'm assuming it's three turns we'll have to see he does get the ct up as well heart of flutter coming out from the summer katone to get that movement and she's moving way off to the side towards this little leela here and one thing i will say is the map positioning i think is working really well for ready player will this is making it so that the mace girls have to come over to little leela that silence nullify could potentially fade away if she can buy enough time she's also going to try and introduce berserk into the mix with the vega tmr and she might even have bow tie i think she only moved a couple of spaces so it looks like trying to make sure that those turns run out to try and land that as rose is going to get her status nullifications online zombie tmr is here for perrine we're going to see how this goes it looks like mashri not quite in range to kick things off she is just going to walk forward and ildira doing the same basically the, these mace girls not having any sort of buffs remaining 3800 damage from the summer katone onto a magic tank is pretty substantial as rosa is going to walk forward as well so many units on this field out of buffs because they started on opposite sides hallowed ray doing 4k though and this little leela is not long for this world it looks like as the silencing spell comes out it lands a silence on both and the berserk on the mashri so i don't know how many turns that silence is nullified for but it wasn't enough as both of these mace units are now incapable of dealing damage basically as level four water girl coming out from the oldira Rosa is going to go next. She finds a Divine Prayer onto Little Leela, who now gets Shell as well to make matters worse. And is this the answer to the Mace team this week here? As Mashri just going to come up, she's angry. She beats her with a stick, and Perrine is ready to deal damage. Vortex kick coming in, not a ton of damage. Soaked fairly well here. About two to 3k onto both. Level four Water Girl coming out of the Eldira. And the thing is, this set is set up really nicely for Ready Player Will, but do they have the damage? Rosa is in support mode. Perrine is basically going to have to deal all the damage by herself. I say that 
Looks like Little Leela does chip in a little bit, but Ildira is in the back to heal. If Perrine cannot kill these quickly, these status nullification or these status effects will go away and Sand Rooster can come back. Subjugating Fist is going to drop the Mashri though, so it is a 3v2 advantage for Ready Player Will at Fight Club. Level 4 Water Girl coming out, not dealing a lot of damage. And it looks like Rosa is going to go next. What does she go for? It's just the Righteous Prayer. She's going to nullify statuses. And I wonder if she just have like has like all attacks turned off or if her AI is truly that supportive. I didn't realize it if that's the case. As Silence Blade coming out from the Little Leela and the Berserk lands again. So another double status onto the Katone. Subjugating Fist is going to dunk her. And in this 3v1, I don't think Ildira can win. Ready Player Will coming in with the status effects in the perfect map positioning is trying to win this fight here. As the shell remove and map effect is there from the Dark Ramu esper but i don't think that's going to matter as finally rosa tries to deal some damage 1100 from holy is not a whole lot though Perrine should be able to do a good chunk though with subjugating fist 5k little leela can she clean it up not quite but silencing spell says you are not allowed to deal any more damage to our team rosa going to come out with the miracle of love just to show off the limit break just to go in style here as it looks like that heal is going to hit both Perrine, Little Leela, and actually it heals herself as well, which is very, very cool to see. And Ready Player Will and Fight Club putting on a show here, honestly. Uh, this Maze team has been really, really good against almost everybody all season. Not everybody has a Little Leela, though, and that Little Leela is putting in the work against this team. So very, very well done by Ready Player Will and Fight Club. GG. The last fight of week number eight is none other than the Fire Ferrets versus the Rock Boys. The tale as old as time, the rematch from season two grand finals. As it looks like the Glacella, Winter Rabbies, and Valade on the side of the Fire Ferrets. And it looks like Halloween Ryryu, Murmur, and Ferris on the side of the Rock Boys. And fittingly enough, I think this is actually the same map as the grand finals was done on season two. It looks like Turambar is here to try and get his revenge. Will Ram9 deny it and keep his playoff hopes alive? We're going to have to find out. Is the King Bradley TMR is online for the Halloween Ryryu? Ice Vitalization came up from the Valade. He's going to go for another buff here on the entire party. This one's the Barb Blizzara. Obviously, the Elemental Resistance is not going to do a whole lot, but those statuses, or stat rather, upgrades are always good. The stat Resistance is online for Glacella as the Tranquil Spirit is here for Winter Rabbies, and it looks like that is the new Dario TMR with the chance to silence. Could be pretty huge if they're able to land that on either Murmur or the Ryryu here as multiple hasted up units on the side of Ram 9 with a very healthy Ferris. Dragon Defense comes out, Protect and Shell, a bunch of really good statuses. And Murmur's up next. What is she going to go for? She's channeling a fast cast, which means the entire team of the Rock Boys is going to be hasted up. Valade says, I've done everything I can. I can't do another thing. I'm just going to walk forward. Leap Strike comes out for 4,500 damage, getting the AP cost rate down as well as the Immortal Spirit is here for Ravi. So she's got courage. But here are the Rock Boys coming in strong as they, looking at the turn order, are all going to go back to back here. Can Glacella live this? Actually, they're going to go for the Winter Rabbies instead as Creeping Terror comes out from Halloween Ryryu. How much damage is this going to be? Has the chance to poison. 4,400 damage. The poison does not land. So very well done by Turnbar to prep for that as Ferris is up next with the Pirate Raid. A three-hit slash chain. Good damage. Although Glacella does shake it off a little bit here as Murmur is going to go next. Can she capitalize with a jamming thrust? 2,000 damage. Glacella is soaking that quite well, actually. Valade is going to go next, but looking at the turn order, Ryryu is going to go next after this. That Kirata is coming in clutch from the Valade here as Halloween Ryryu most assuredly would have been able to claim a kill, but the Spell Breacher does so much damage. Heals him back up to full. Winter Rabbies is proc to Courage already. Leap Strike Plus comes out from Glacella, but Ferris shakes that off like it's nothing with all the AoE resist in her kit. And Winter Rabbies needs to deal a ton right here to have a chance. Halloween Ryryu just put in so much work. This big giant snowball calling out from Winter Rabbies, is it enough to crush the Ryryu? No. It does land the Frostbite and deplete some AP, but Ferris is up next, and she should claim at least one kill, if not two here. I think she's going to be able to clean up both the Ravis and the Valade. And this might be Ram 9 continuing his hot streak. Pirate Onslaught is going to claim a double kill. It is now a 3v1. And Glacial is a great unit, but there is just no way here. 
and Ram 9 and the Rock Boys started off the season 1 and 6. They are looking to claim their third kill in a row as the poison counter lands on a murmur. I don't know if I've actually ever seen that come out. It was very cool to see from Turnbar here, but it's not enough. So it looks like the Sildra Roar is going to actually doesn't heal. It just gives some stat uh, increases to the murmur. The Frostbite putting in some work, but it's not enough work because Ryru still has plenty of AP. Spellbreacher comes out and damage caps again. And Ram 9 and this Halloween Ryru has just been going crazy the last few weeks, putting in the work and showing that he is actually a fantastic unit. And Turambar is going to fall to 5-5. Five and five. Ram 9 and the Rock Boys go up to 4-6 and six and keep their playoff hopes alive. All right, guys, eight weeks over and done with one week remaining for the Champions League, and we officially have half of our playoff participants clinched. The other three spots are up for grabs heading into the final week amongst seven different teams that's actually insane so heading into the final week it should be a good one i'm gonna go ahead and take my face off the screen here guys so you can follow along i normally don't do this but i'm going to put the schedule for the final week here up on the graphic just so that you guys can see and follow along with me a little better so in first place we've got maverick coach of symphony of the knights at an eight and two record has basically control of his own destiny for that first seed if he wins next week He's number one. He gets a first round bye and would play the winner of the four versus five matchup. So winning next week would be huge. However, if he loses, opens up the possibility of falling out of that first round bye. If Sand Rooster and McCrane were to both win and Maverick loses, he would be the three seed. So Sand Rooster of Unicorn Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo with a win, clinches a first round bye with a loss, could fall out of it if McCrane were to win. And again, if McCrane wins, he needs either of Maverick or Sand Rooster to lose to clinch a first round bye. So none of these three teams can fall below the three seed. They are doing three seed at worst, but two of them gets a bye. And that is basically what they're fighting over at the moment. Here's where the brunt of this, the uh, standings comes in, though. And this is really, really interesting. None of these teams who are five and five or four and six are officially out of it. It all depends on who wins, who loses, what the tiebreakers are. There's a lot of stuff going on there. But just to go over what it is right now, we have a five-way tie between teams who are all five and five. At the moment, if the season ended, Ready Player Will would be the fourth seed. This is because of all teams who have this five and five record, he has beaten three out of the other four. The only one that he has lost to is JB. Turambar, Jesus, and JB79 are all tied as they've all beaten each other in a little triangle, all have a two and two record, and Surf Taco would be out at one and three. So if the season were to end right now, essentially what would happen, it'd be a little weird, but Ready Player Will would claim the fourth seed regardless. And these three teams would do a round robin best of one, basically to see who cracks those final two spots. So that is kind of how it goes, guys. Um, Surf Taco sitting at five and five though, even at the eighth spot, still has a good chance to make it. If he wins next week, he still has a very high chance. And Ram 9 and the Rock Boys, you gotta be kidding me. Dude started out one and six, with one week remaining, still has a chance to make it because his four wins are against a lot of these teams that are right in here. So if he wins and enough lose, he could easily win a tiebreaker situation over so some of these other teams. And Machin X, House Shoe Puff, growing strong in the same exact fashion. The only problem is he does have the head-to-head -head loss to Ram 9. Coppola in 11th place with Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries at a 3 and 7 record, and Numero 80 of the Blind Enthusiasts at 2 and 8. Unfortunately, will not be in the playoffs this season but I know they are trying to play spoiler next week and I would not put it past them. So this is a good, good one, guys. It should be really interesting heading into the final week. Seven different teams fighting over three spots, three teams fighting over that first round bye. It couldn't get better than this, honestly. I couldn't ask for anything better. So I'm really excited with how this final week is going to go. I hope you guys are too. And until next time, have a wonderful day.